Humba bum bum yep but ba do do ba ba do do do. Ha! What a nice day for some gardening. Don't get eaten by the insects. I know you will though, cause this is recorded in the future. Ah, uh, all of your berries have been eaten too. It's a hard knock life out here, eh? But it sure does look cozy. You know, I most likely remember this one time when I was probably younger and my grandpa left me this non-horror movie cabin in the woods. I bet he lived there for like two to three years and maybe built it with his own bare hands. I wonder if you are a horror proof. So since this cabin is going to be made mostly out of coffee stirring sticks, I'm making it to coffee stirring stick scale so I can measure here and put it there. Wow. This primo piece of paperboard is actually the cardboard backing from an IKEA picture frame that I didn't need anymore. Knife! So I'm cutting out a strip that's just wide enough to- oh, careful. Wide enough to be the back and the front of the- oh, careful. Back and the front of the cabin, and then I'm gonna- ah, oh, dang it. Yeah, that's a good cabin width, but it definitely feels a bit too tall for a cabin. I'm gonna have to- oh, careful. Okay, let's take some more measurements from the sides in the middle of the house, transfer that to the sides in the middle of the paperboard, and then draw some lines just for fun, and hey presto, messy. Hey presto, we've made a happy little house. Look over there while I steal some of your pictures, cause man, this painting backing stuff is like the prime thickness. We are gonna have to carefully fillet it in twain though, cause we're gonna need a front and a back. Nice. According to the blueprint, the door is about four sticks wide, so I'm gonna use four sticks as a blueprint for the door width. And then go grab something round-ish for a round-ish outline for our eventual round-ish upper floor window. Two stick window. Good job, but don't assemble the parts yet because- No, I said don't. We're gonna do other stuff. Well, what's next? Garbage. I could really use these four cardboard sticks, and the reason I have them already is because I've cut them out of this super thick, hardcore cardboard. Just wide enough to match these sticks that will surround the base. Man, this stuff is nuts. It's so hard. What, what, what was it, really? Uh, assassin! Don't worry, hot glue can restrain even the most tenacious tomfoolery. Just a square or two and a nice squeege will do it. Oh, and I'm using that lid with the weights in the background to keep the degrees in the 90s while I fiddle. Oof, out of one sticky situation into the next. Channeling my repressed cooking show, I've preemptively made about 6 million coffee stirring sticks cut to about 2 centimeters in length. That's what's gonna surround the base eventually, but for now we need to get sticky with some full length sticks. So I'm smooshing down some PVA glue all across- oh all across the cardboard, and then I'm putting the straightest sticks that I could find, as straight as I can manage, as close to each other as I can manage, as neatly as I can manage. Flip it over before it burns, and then put some weights on it, cause warp tends to glue things. <laughs> it's looking pretty nice, but this prolonged partition doesn't fit our particular predicament. So let's prep this panel for assembly. Instead of individually measuring and cutting each individual coffee stirring stick to size before gluing them onto the cardboard, I'd recommend just using a craft blade and waiting for the glue to dry, then trim off the excess. It's way more faster and way more or less madness inducing, don't ask me how I know. For the windows, I also just roughly lined up shorter sticks and then very carefully trimmed them from the back. Wall, 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 look what we have here. Despite the weights, I ended up gluing some coffee stirring sticks to the back of the cardboard as well to counteract some of the warping. But look, there's a window missing. Oh, I know, it must have gotten shy and hit around the back. There it is. Well, there's nothing wrong with a good back hole, but I think with a bit of surgery, we can add a front hole as well. We can use a craft blade to remove the worst of it and simultaneously break the tip off the craft blade so that it becomes dull and useless. Here's Pierre. Ugh, what a tool. Ooh, what a tool. The top floor window doesn't actually have a window frame, so I wanted to round out the actual opening as much as possible and add sort of a bevel to use a 3D modeling term. Now, no giant thumbs will get any splinters if they come a fondling. The rest of this fiber fluff can go into my I don't think I'll ever use this bottle. Waste not. Whoa, 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 you hear that? That's the great idea alarm. I had this plan to trim off a sliver of cardboard from the back of each wall section so that the corners would just fit together, no seams needed. 
Hey, look at this. I have this piece of a puddle of resin that I poured onto a baking sheet. It gives it a nice shiny surface, but it keeps the background matte. And it's still kind of squishy, which is my favorite part of windows. So with the craft plate, I can just cut them to be a perfectly pleasing pressure fit. And since they're kind of rough on the inside, they will keep the eyeballs of nosy neighbors out while letting some fancy photons escape the confines of our claustrophobic cabin. I'm trying to see how much I can alliterate, okay? I had a glass of wine. Anyway, I guess I should talk about what I'm doing. I I'm gluing together each corner of the cabin now. So if you're following along at home, get your glue gun out and grab some aloe vera for the inevitable burns. Yeah, it, this part is pretty self-explanatory. Just glue the things together, it'd be fine. Hey, you know what? I wish I had a box of sticks. Oh! Well, if we compare to our reference image, we know that there's going to be four planks on the right-hand side of the stairs, then a stairs, and then the rest of the sticks. So let's line that up, slather on some glue, and get to placing them. Eh. The benefit here is that we don't even have to measure. We can just put four sticks on one side, and then the rest on the other, and then what's left is the stairs. Waste. To make sure we don't have to pay royalties to too many brands, I figured I'd channel my inner Baumgartner and just peel off the paper on top. Also though, because it was a very shiny paper and glue and shiny don't stick good. But you know what does stick good? Sticks! I'm using more coffee stirring sticks and lazily marking out the corners and edges for a nice trim on the top of the platform. Technically, the in-game version doesn't have this, but I'm taking some artistic liberties. You know, I'm really liking these weights. I find them very relatable, because they tell you to skip sport. Which I can get behind. Big stick. Little stick. With the cunning use of some not discarded takeout chopsticks and a good old roll and snap with some sandpaper to finish it up, I picture Rowan Atkinson in my mind as I momentarily become Mr. Beam. Oh boo, so bad. Don't put that in. That wasn't good. I'm doing four by twos to surround the base platform, not to be confused by the two by fours for later. You still following along? Good. Then you can put these here for structural integrity. Perfect. These are mainly to surround the platform and hide some unsightly cardboard gaps, but I did actually also put in some extra sticks for structural integrity because the house had started getting a little bent out of shape. Next I'm using a baby's sneeze worth of PVA glue to surround the window with a window frame. I'm not actually gluing down the window here because I want to be able to paint the model before I actually fix them in place. So I'm trying to delicately fix these bisected coffee stirring sticks on the very border of the window, top to bottom. The bottom one I decided to actually stand on end to create a little window sill. It was quite tricky. So once the glue is dried, I can just pop them out of the sockets and we got ourselves a party, buddy. But wait a minute, what's that suspiciously partition looking partition up in the corner? You haven't showed us how to do that? What the partition that contains the firewood is actually only ever seen from the very front in the game. So I had to make up my own version of it and I decided to make wood slats on either side of wood beams because I figured it looked cool and also it would be a good place for the spiders to build little nests. Let me tell you, this one time I had this idea of building stairs out of cardboard and like gluing each individual angle together out of flat pieces. I, I don't know, I guess I, I was young and naive, I thought it was the most realistic way of building a stairs. I don't know what I was thinking. Look, we all have things in our past that we're not necessarily proud of. Fortunately, I did come to my senses and decided to make it out of foam core board instead. So I cut out two single steps and then two double wide steps and then stacked them on top of each other. And that was it. That was the stairs done, pretty much. Look, it fits perfectly. Well, hey, look, it's all covered in sticks. That's pretty nice. You know, that'll go nice right there. Oof, we've been doing a lot of talking so far. I think it's time for a checkup. 
Open wide. Say ah. <laughs> well, that went pretty well, but now I'm left with a bunch of these thick sticks. Uh, you know what this one reminds me of? A floor. The floorboards on the platform in front of the house were too wide to be made out of coffee stirring sticks because it's supposed to be a row of three. So I bought these tongue depressors and then trimmed them to size and sanded them down and then we wait. Hey, does this look like a roof to you? Well it isn't, it's shingles! Ooh. I'm lining the roof with a thin strip of cardboard to give the shingles a bit of lift in the front end and then I'm just lining the whole roof with rows and rows of shingles. It's actually technically probably not waterproof because they're not actually overlapping each other but that's the way the game do so that's the way that I do. It's also probably not waterproof because it's made out of paper but it works I think it turns out like this. For some finishing touches on the main building itself, I'm rounding out the windows a little bit more just to make them feel a bit more worn and then it's time to glue on the roof. So a couple of squirt holes of glue along the upside and downside sides of the roof and it slaps right on. Look at that. So satisfying. Ouch. To keep the tip of the top in tip top shape, we're gonna need some TP. Well, a toilet paper roll. I'm using a politically controversial pencil to bend the shingles into a bit more of a bendy shape and then it's just a matter of cutting them into pieces and aligning them on top of the roof. Oh you did it! For the door I figured we could use a bit of door shaped foam core board. Now you might remember that I had a door before made out of cardboard. I don't know where it went. So I'm just gluing some sticks onto this and lining it all up. I'm gonna add a little bit of an extra stick later, you won't see this though, but for now we can just glue it onto the building. And line it with a door frame. Wait, but where's the chimney? I could swear it was supposed to go right there. Oh, there it is! The chimney's dead simple. I just glued two stairs together and then I'm covering it in a mixture of carpenter's spackle and some water to get a sort of masonry texture that I can draw some lines for bricks in. Oh yeah, and I also added a little trim to the edge of the roof. Roofs? Roof. Roof. Tiny, 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 tiny window sticks whittled into a pressure fit and then secured with a couple of globs of glue on either edge joint place part. Ooh, good job! Shots on me! Actually, no. We're gonna have to make some goo. Today, Junior! This is a mixture of kinda two parts glue and maybe one part water with a garnish of black paint to simulate what Mod Podge would maybe be. I'm going to slather this across the entire model. What this will do is both seal in everything in a thin layer of glue and also give it a top coat so that no matter where I paint, the paint will adhere in a unanimous fashion since we're dealing with the same type of surface everywhere. It actually works really well, so I'm gonna save the rest. Hey, I just want to say thank you to the fans for helping out. And after two coats of this goo, we got a nice spoo. Key house. But it's not actually assembled yet, because we still got a ways to go. On the in-game building, there are a couple of distinct scuff marks in the center between the door and the upper floor window, on the right hand side of the door, and on the bottom side of the window side. And then there's one on the walkway as well, and I wanted it to be as accurate as I could get it. Stepping away from accuracy for a while though, one thing that's sadly not on the in-game building is the bisected cap of an eyebrow pen. I'm sanding it down a bit so that paint will stick to it better and then I'm gluing the two halves together in the middle and super gluing some steel wire to the bottom for a nice roof gutter. It's not in the game, but I want to add resin, so I'm gonna. Artistic liberty. Guys, you gotta roll over and... No, keep going. One final push. 
The paint job for this building consists of about 50 shades of brown, so I'm gonna mix up some red, some yellow, some black, some white, and some brown, but I'm gonna sneak in some greens now and then, and you won't see this, because I had to repaint this model about four or five times before I was actually happy with it. I foolishly started out by painting the entire model brown, because I figured, hey, Wood is brown. I'll paint everything brown and then I'll go from there. If it's real, then it has to start by being brown and then go elsewhere to become not brown, right? And I painted the roof in like an off terracotta. It's not so important. The point is, I wanted to yellowify the brown wood later with a thin coat of yellow dotted with a sponge to avoid brush strokes. It does have the fun benefit of coming with a proprietary flipping technique that you can do over and over for endless hours of fun, but it does make the model look very dirty and gross and bad. At this point, I hadn't yet conceded, so I was trying to give the roof a wash of a sort of dark orange. A wash is a mixture of very little paint with very lots of water, and usually a bit of dish soap to break the surface tension and help it flow into the cracks and crevices. Eventually, this is what I ended up with for the wood, which is not bad wood, but it's bad stardew wood. So we're gonna have to do it over! Painting very vivid colors is extremely difficult because a paint can only ever get as vivid as the base paint is. So I coated all of the wood in a Kraft's mac and cheese yellow and gave it a brown wash to let the wood sort of seep through and dirty it up a bit. And maybe have a paper towel handy for this because it's gonna get wet and you're gonna wanna wipe. The gutter got a coat of silver, followed up with some gunmetal grey. I think in all of the reshoots and repaints, I forgot to film the dry brushing, which is essentially putting very little light paint on the paintbrush and then dusting it around the model to just hit the highlights, as you can see has been done here. Anyway, let's drill out a hole for the... Oh. What? Well, I was... Uh, I was gonna put the candle through the floor here. Well, now what do we do? This is awkward. This is not going to plan at all. Okay, to kill some time, let's take this electric tea candle apart and see what makes it flick. <laughs> ha! There's not a lot to it, eh? There's a little cover and a little holder and then the light is doing all of the flickering all on its own. Neat. Well, let's see if I can put it back together again. I think, I think this goes through there and then maybe I can well, that, well that, that looks right, and and I put it upside down and then just sort of push until until it sticks, until it makes a click. D yeah? Does it, does it still work? Well, hey, I win! Ah, well that was fun. Let's make a doorknob. I have some scrap clay parts left over from other projects that I'm just going to cut the tip off with a craft played oh and glued to the end of a toothpick holy floor look what's happened well the dremel's recharged so let's round out this hole and fit the candle into it with a perfect squeeze and a bit of secret hot glue later you don't see this that you you saw nothing hey it works nice there's also this funky mixture of cardboard and sawdust left over let's throw it in the bin and with that, you know what it's time for? Assembly. I knew that.
And then just the roof on... Hey, wait a minute. What about the firewood? Ah, tr d dang it. We're on a mission. We're hunting for wood. It's brown and sticky. Should be around here somewhere. Let's test this one. Mm, not good enough. Not good enough. Ooh, this one is nice. Yeah. Now let's bolt before we get caught. <laughs> Mother Nature. I'm giving the sticks a quick boil and bake just to make sure that nothing untoward is living inside of them and a spider egg sack is gonna explode when I poke them with my knife. Check for life signs. We're good. There we go, the piece de resistance. And then the piece de resistance. Wait, is it? It's careful. Oh, what? Well, it's gotta be straight. There you go. Pies de resistance. Oh. And then some pieces of resin stones. I'm sorry. I'm squirting out a strand of UV resin onto a smooth piece of plastic. Now UV resin is a resin that hardens under UV light. So all you gotta do is shine it with a UV flashlight for a couple of seconds and then you can pop that bad boy right off. And presto, you have a nice flowing waterfall just ready to go. Bend it into shape, stick it into place, and call your mom. This actually turned out really nice. This is now my favorite feature of this entire diorama. I love working with resin. It's just so satisfying and it looks so professional and also is poisonous. So remember that if you're copying this at home. Because I want the water to look like it's flowing, I needed the resin to ripple a bit. So I gave it a bit of a blow from above and hardened it at the same time. What was that magic tool you ask? It's a duster, a rechargeable computer cleaner. It's essentially a hair dryer, but with a very thin snout. And it's great. I love this thing. I don't even shower anymore, I just blow myself. To garnish this branchy piece of real estate, I'm using fine green turf, clump foliage, spring grass, and that glue from over there. This is my favorite part, because you get to hide all of your crimes. All you need to do is mix up some water and some glue, slather it on where you want the moss to grow, and sprinkle it on like it's some sort of cinnamon on some sort of cinnamon-style snack. Except it's mold. It's hard not to get super liberal with this, but I tried to keep it to where I thought moisture would gather and do a couple of clumps here and there rather than an even spread. Of course, this is the very first house that you get when you move to Stardew Valley, so it has been neglected for a while. No one has been there to collect the firewood or to clean off the walls, maybe. And I wanted it to be not run down, but just sort of mildly reclaimed by the elements, awaiting your arrival to fix it all up nice. The most disgusting thing I think I did on this project was mixing snow flock with glue and a bit of brown paint. I wanted to make a path of footsteps that had been sort of caked in dirt, and I figured if I add some snow flock to some brown paint, maybe when it dries it will look like crusty dirt. It, it kinda worked. And finally, a welcome mat made out of an old piece of t-shirt dipped in some glue, and it's time for the beauty shots.
made it! That took a lot longer than I had intended it to. I did edit this entire video in DaVinci Resolve for the first time as a learning experience, so that took some time as well. But hey, it didn't turn out too bad, eh? You know what's not too bad as well? The newest Patreons. <laughs> Les, Foster Gal, Ashes Hedge, Cuts His Nutses, MDPQ, Dark Rose, and Kit Bunny. Thank you. And to the rest of the Patreons, also thank you. Still, perpetually thank you. Also, I cannot recommend this album enough, Stardew and Chill from Game Chops. Link in the description, it's amazing. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did like it and you want to see more, don't turn on notifications, they're just annoying, right? Just come back whenever you feel like it, and maybe there's something new. And uh, I'll see you around.